Well, good morning. Good morning. See, this chilly day is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad for it. For each of us has had the opportunity to allow our feet to hit the floor, to have strength in our limbs, and to draw breath into our lungs, to be clothed in our right mind, or at least as right as it was when we went to bed. <laughs> and so we move forward this day into this time of worship and praise. A few announcements for your hearing this day, friends. We are so thankful for all of our guests who are joining us here in the sanctuary and those of you who are joining us uh, virtually via our Facebook live stream feed. We appreciate your presence with us this day. If you are a guest here in the sanctuary or with us online, we ask that you take a moment to complete our connection card. Simply let us know that you are here and certainly want to uh, ask that you would give us any and all feedback uh, that you feel comfortable doing so that we might continue to improve our virtual and in-person worship experience. Prayer requests can be submitted all the way up until the end of the sermon. For those of you who are online, you simply enter that prayer request in the comment section. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary, you simply need to text that number to get that prayer request directly to me. So again, prayer requests can be submitted all the way up until the very end of the sermon. Friends, we have several opportunities to serve here in this community of faith with our finance team, our stewardship team, our endowment team. Our outreach, trustees, United Methodist men, and web maintenance teams. If you're interested in any of those ministries, simply email me at pastoranthony at farmingtonfumc.org. That's Pastor Anthony, all one word, all lowercase, at farmingtonfumc.org. Sunday school continues to need uh, caring, loving adult volunteers, uh, along with, uh, regrettably, we're going to need a new children's ministry coordinator. Uh, Nora is, uh, made the hard decision to go back into the classroom, and so we are thankful uh, for what she has been able to do for us. Uh, we know she's going to be a blessing to all of the kids that uh, are going to be in her class, as she's been a blessing to all of our kids here. So if you're interested uh, in either volunteering for our Sunday school or in the children's ministry position, you need to see uh, Pastor B. Pastor B, stand up, turn around, wave your hand, and do the hokey pokey. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, friends, today uh, is the first day that we're going to be taking orders for our new long sleeve t shirts. If you are interested in purchasing one of our long sleeve t shirts, sizes small to extra large are $15, sizes 2X and up are $20. Uh, I'll be out in the upper gallery just next to the display case where those t shirts are displayed in order to take those orders today after service. Uh, I need to also alert you because it's come back to my attention. Uh, that there is an email and text scam using my name. Isn't that wonderful? And so if you get an email from Reverend Anthony Hood, one, I will never use my full name as a subject heading in any email that I send to you. Two, I will never ask you for a favor innocuously without telling you what it is and only ask you to respond via email. You can call me directly always and ever. You have my cell number. That's why it's published. So if you get an email or a text supposedly from me, from any Gmail uh, email account, it is a scam, it is a fraud. Do not respond, delete it immediately. Um, do not, and under any circumstances, uh, respond in that kind for either a text or email. If there's something I wanna ask you, I'll call you directly, or I'll email you directly with what the request is in the subject line or in the body of the email. So uh, if you get an email from a Gmail account, it is a fraud, it is a scam. Please do not respond. Amen? Amen. 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 Two last announcements, friends. Uh, today is Sunday fun day at 4 o'clock, and hopefully the sun will be out by then. <laughs> and so we're inviting uh, those children and family with children to come out here to the church at 4 o'clock this day for a time of games and a time of fun. Uh, feel free and deep just to come on out. Uh, they're going to be here. You can gather in the lower gallery, uh, the double doors from the parking lot. Uh, we are excited about having this Sunday fun day this day. Lastly, friends, want to thank each and every one of you that helped make our rummage sale possible. These last two and a half days, three days, including our special friends and family day, uh, have been a wonderful experience. Uh, I feel that at least four or five different calls of folks who said, are you still taking rummage? And I was overjoyed to say, no, 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 not at all. We've got enough. <laughs> Thank you so much. Maybe next year, call us again in January if you got more things to donate. Uh, and the, after all of the expenses have been paid, uh, the rummage sale this year uh, has raised $2,220. Amen. 
Now, I'm not a lotto person, but, you know, 222 might be a number that y'all might want to play sometime. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know? <laughs> with that, friends, we prepare ourselves to move forward this day into this time of worship with our opening hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Number 133 in the hymnal, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Again, 133 in the hymnal or on the screen momentarily, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Good morning, church family. He let me out of the streaming booth today to get to see the front of the church. Please join me in the opening prayer. You, O Lord, uphold all who are falling and raise up all who are bowed down. Our eyes look to you, O Lord, and you give us what we need in due season. When you open your hand, you satisfy the desires of our souls. All your ways are just, and all you do is kind. Hear our prayer, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The scripture lesson today is a short but profound one. It's from John chapter 14, verses one through three. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go there and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that, I, so that where I am, there you may be also. The word of God for the people of God.
Good morning. I'm going to invite all the kids, school age kids, to stand up. Just stand up. We're going to get to a point where we can all gather up here again, but you're welcome to stand. We'd like everyone to know you're here. And begin with um, a couple things. One, our hope this afternoon is that families of all sizes, from one adult to lots of people, can come and just spend an afternoon getting together and being silly and having a good time and getting acquainted. So please join us if you're able. We sure would love to have you. Um, and then to begin with what is uh, what we hope to share this afternoon, but the most important lesson of all, God loves me. All the time. God loves me. All the time. Amen. And so we're working, I'm working um, this month on our series about the guys in the window. And today we're going to talk about the third one over from the left, Paul. Now, oh, I left it. So, um, Paul is famous for a lot of things, and the book of Acts tells the story of his ministry. But the fact is, he's famous for, I don't know, writing letters. And so, I thought we'd think a little bit about what it meant to write letters, and what it means to get mail. Now, first of all, let's think about what getting mail is like today. I don't know, not much important mail comes in my mailbox anymore. Anybody get important mail in their mailbox anymore? No? Good, good. Not, we don't. But we get most of it in email, right? Or text, or it's electronic. It's just push send, right? And then there was a time when we got these, which are uh, from my family. They're Christmas cards and birth announcements and special things that actually did come in the snail mail. And before that, I remember 
my dad and his mom every single week. They wrote or typed on a typewriter, I know it's old, but on a typewriter they'd write to each other and put it in the mail and somebody would bring it to them. And so even in our lifetimes, the notion of mail has changed. But in Paul's time, it was even more different than that. See, Paul traveled around, but when he wrote a letter, it was probably actually dictated to someone else in a specific language, which we don't speak anymore, probably. And when he wrote the letter, it had to be handed to somebody, an individual, not a mailbox, an individual who got on a ship and took that letter to one of those cities that we hear about. The letters that Paul wrote are indeed the better half, better, second half of what we call the New Testament. They were letters that Paul wrote to churches. Now, the truth is, folks back then didn't read very much. Not many of them read. And so an individual in that church got this letter that Paul had written to them, and it became a sermon. So the person who could read read the letter to the congregation at Rome or Corinth or Thessalonica. And then, because it was so important to them, eventually it became part of our scriptures. And so mail was a whole, letters were a whole different thing. And Paul is the one who wrote most of them that we read today. He wrote letters. That's what he did for us. And we have them still in our scriptures. And so we have John the Baptist on the end, who baptized Jesus, and Paul who wrote all those letters who have become such a part of our scripture. And that's why those two are in this window for us to remember. Mm. And we'll hear about the other two as we go along this month. So, amen. And I invite you now to, for all the children, elementary and middle school students to uh, adjourn to um, Sunday school it's a lot easier when everybody's up here and we can just all walk out, isn't it? So <laughs> I'm going to invite you to meet us uh, in the hall, and um, we'll go to Sunday school. And then I invite th those who are remaining to share in this wonderful hymn of the church. Amen. Thank you, Harvey, again, for always offering us beautiful music. And thank you, Dave Drake, 
for blessing us with your musical gift this day. Uh, all of the students at East Middle School get a chance to experience that each and every day. Uh, we have a chance to experience it on occasion, so thank you for that. Friends, we move forward into our time of impartation today, where the Lord can impart to us. Our theme for today's message is, there is room for everyone. There is room for everyone. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask your blessing upon us as we move forward into this time. We open ourselves to you fully, mind, heart, body, and soul, for we are your servants. So speak, Lord. We are listening. Let every word and every revelation give us hope and instruction. I now decrease and ask that you would increase. In Christ's holy name, amen. We continue our series of messages in conjunction with our 2022 stewardship campaign entitled Under the Roof. Our theme emphasizes the importance of the relationships and spiritual development that we've experienced under this roof. Our theme calls us to remember this building and all its spaces is dedicated to fulfilling the purpose that God has set for us. Our theme calls us to remember the times, the places offered us comfort in challenging situations. Our theme calls us to refocus, to recommit, and to revive our partnership with God for the continued healing and transformation of families and communities under this roof. Our theme challenges us to make the commitment to ensure this place stands as a refuge and a fortress for the weary, that they might find peace and healing inside its walls, to make a commitment that will provide the resources needed to make room for others under this roof. In our text, we find Jesus offering his disciples a word of comfort and assurance as he's preparing to move towards Calvary. Jesus is aware of their anxiety, and so he offers his disciples this word of encouragement, this word of hope, this word of peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Indeed, many of us needed that word at some point in time over the last 19 months. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in and me, that this pandemic will come to an end, that wearing masks will come to an end, that we will have an opportunity where we'll be able to gather again in safe capacity and fashion, that we will have a chance to renew those commitments. But in the meantime, do not be troubled. Jesus taught his disciples that indeed they were a part of his ministry, that he himself was sent by the creator to offer them a pathway for redemption and transformation. And at this moment, Jesus calls them to remember who he is and who has sent him. Jesus then offers them a word, not only to encourage these 12, but also us as well. As he offers this word, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to be with myself so that where I am, there you may be also. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, you will be also. What a wonderful, encouraging word. Jesus and God of our creator have prepared a special place for us. For those of you who have ever visited family and friends, it's a wonderful thing for them to be able to say, no, don't get a hotel. You can stay with us. We have a guest room specially prepared for you. It's a wonderful thing when you walk into the room and it is adorned and it is nicely made because they thought about you in advance. Indeed, friends, God has thought not only of us who are inside the doors of this place, not only us who are already under this roof, but for those who have yet to come inside. We see this concern for all people in the construction of the temple. There was space in the outer court for the Gentiles, those who believed in one God, even though they weren't Jews themselves, although they had not converted, there was a space for them in the temple. God says, not only do I want my people to come into connection with me, I want others who believe that I exist to have a space under my roof. Indeed, although the Gentiles had not converted to Judaism, God made room and space for them and commanded it to be a part of the temple. 
so that they might indeed find themselves in connection and community with the God that offers us all hope. God made space in the temple which challenges us to make room for those who may not look like us, think like us, sing like us, worship like us, but who are genuinely in pursuit of relationship with God. Which brings us to point number one, friends. Under God's roof, sacred and safe space is provided so everyone has an opportunity to connect with God. Under God's roof, sacred and safe space is provided so that everyone has an opportunity to connect with God. Under God's roof, there is room for everyone. If we are genuinely seeking to love our neighbors as ourselves, it moves us to make decisions for the benefit of others above ourselves, which is often difficult because the tendency is to make sure that our personal preferences are maintained. The things that we like are ensured, not necessarily making room for others. Christ's ministry on earth was all about making room for others, paving a wider access road for relationship with God. Likewise, when we make room for others, we provide for them an opportunity to connect with God. We provide an access road for them to find Christ, and we provide for them the ability to come into the space just as they are, so that they might find connection with God. Friends, there's a difference between designating space for others versus creating a space others can call home. It is the difference between a hotel and a subdivision. The largest hotel in the world is, and I'm going to see if I can get this right, is Milovov in Moscow with more than 25 or 7,500 rooms. Any of us can make a reservation and be there. But in that reservation, only what is guaranteed is that we have a room, someone to change it. We may even have access to continental breakfast. We might have a benefits plan, but there are some things we can't do in that room. We can't make any changes. We have to respect the people who are above, below, and on either side of us. We can't paint the room any color that we might want to paint it. We can't take down pictures and put up new pictures. There's some limitations to having a room. Yes, it's reserved for us, but it's reserved for us with conditions. Many of our community of faith say we make room for everyone, but we do so with conditions. You can have that space over there as long as you don't X, Y, or Z. You can come in and worship with us as long as you don't ask us to do X, Y, or Z. Friends, that's not making space. That's not making a home. That's saying we're providing something for you to make you feel like we've thought about you, but we're giving it to you with conditions. In contrast, a subdivision offers a place in a community that we can call home. Many of us live in subdivisions where there are many dwelling places. And what can you do with your home? You can do almost about anything unless you have an HOA. <laughs> And even when you have an HOA, depending on who's in control of that HOA, you still have some level of liberty. But what makes that subdivision different is that it's your home. If you want to paint the walls bright red, orange, and pink, you can do so. If you want to remodel your kitchen, you can do so. If you want to make an addition to the home, you can do so. It's your space within a larger community. Friends, as I was reading through this text, what struck me was that word that Jesus uses. And I looked at the very, very different translations. And one of the things that came to mind initially was, was in the King James Version. It says, I have gone to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many rooms, which connotes that there is a private little conclave for you. But, but as I read this new revised standard, it says there are many dwelling places, many homes within the community of God. And each of you has one prepared just for you. It's one of the things that we celebrate and remind ourselves of when we have those celebrations of the life of those who have meant so much to us that they have now gone home to be with the Lord and they are now in their specially designed dwelling place. Indeed, making space for others doesn't take space away from us. Rather, it challenges us to repurpose space we already have or to extend or to expand. Recently, friends, we celebrated the 
paying off of our mortgage, which was on the addition that we placed into this facility, and that the addition allowed us to have some accessibility for those who didn't have access before. We put in an elevator so that they can go to all three floors in this space. We made access available for those who may have issues with mobility. If there's in a wheelchair, there's space provided for them. Even in the sanctuary, we took out a couple of pews, shortened them a little bit so that people might have access in this space. We took time to think about others when we extended and expanded. It didn't take room for any one of us. We still have a space in the sanctuary. We still have our favorite pews, many of us. But we indeed opened wide and said we want others to come to experience the God that transforms and heals us all. We renovate, we repurpose and expand so that others have a space where they can connect to God. Which brings us to point number two, friends. Making space for others is an act of compassion, humility, and love. It thinks of their needs above our needs, making sure that there is a way for them to connect with God simply in the same fashion that Christ models for us. Christ comes in order that we might have access to the one who loves us unconditionally. Which brings us to point three, friends. Providing space for others to connect does not mean that we have to abandon our preferences but it does mean we do not make our preferences the only option. Providing space for others to connect does not mean we have to abandon our preferences, but it does mean that we do not make our preferences the only option. One of the things that I value and honor about what educators do beyond the miraculous deed of being able to rattle 30 or 40, not 40, hopefully, but 25 to 30 kids in a classroom and be able to direct them towards a common goal is the recognition that every one of those kids might learn differently. And so educators have discovered that in helping people understand how they learn, you have to understand what mechanism best suits someone's learning capacity. And so there are persons who are auditory listeners or auditory learners, people who can learn by hearing. There are those who are visual learners. I need to be able to see how this works in order for me to be able to figure it out. And there are those who are experiential learners that that I need to be able to do something with my hands. I need to have a tactile experience in order for me to get that learning done. And for those of you who are educators, God bless you during this time, especially this 18 months, because you have to figure out how to do that virtually across the means of the web to provide a space for those who would not only hear, but see and then provide tactile experiences as well, so that each one of those children, each one of those kids had an experience and an opportunity to gain the knowledge you are offering. And likewise, friends, that's what Christ calls us to do, to be mindful that indeed my preference cannot be the only preference, that my way of doing things cannot be the only way that it's done for. Indeed, there are persons who experience God in different ways. There are those who experience God in the still yet silence, but we can't have a silent worship alone. There are those who experience God in the praise and the jubilation of music, but we can't have jubilant music alone. There are those who experience God through the preached word, but it can't simply be the preached word. There are those who understand and experience God through the tactile ability of being able to serve others, but we can't have that alone. All All of those have to be brought together under this roof so that everyone has a chance not only to connect with God, but to be in service to God. Authentically making space for others, friends, requires us to create pathways of connection to provide others access to relationship with God. And when we do so authentically and genuinely, sometimes and often it will do and will make us make decisions that we're not comfortable with in order to make others feel comforted. Friends, those of you who, and those of who have gone before us have made space for us under this roof. To honor their legacy and to pursue our mission, we will need to challenge ourselves to brave the uncomfortable and the unfamiliar, to make space for others to connect with God under this roof. For there is room for everyone, and God intends that everyone would find space under this roof. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
We appreciate your continued prayerful and financial support of this church. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. For those in the sanctuary, please remember to place your offering in an offering box as you exit or maybe come in. For those of you online and listening through Zoom, you may mail in or drop off a contribution to our address, 33112 Grand River, Farmington, Michigan, 48336. You may use PayPal and direct your contribution to First United Methodist Church of Farmington. Or you may, give, you may text to give by texting FUMC GIVE to 44321 and follow the prompts. Let's pray. Lord, you have blessed us with such love and goodness. We wonder at the beauty of your creation, and we thank you for the sustenance of food and drink, and we cherish the love of family and friends. Lord, we offer these gifts to you with thankful hearts and in joyous praise. As we give our money and resources, we surrender our whole beings to you in worship and adoration. Lord, may this offering extend the work of your kingdom in your church, your community, and into the beautiful world which you have made. Amen. Indeed, we do love the Lord and offer our vocal praise and our life of praise that God might see and find it a sweet, sweet sound in God's ear. Friends, we now turn our attention to our time of prayer, and there is much for us to celebrate and much for us to continue to be in prayer for. This day, we want to celebrate uh, Arun and Beulah Edwin's 25th wedding anniversary, which was October 11th. 
<laughs> Today we're going to celebrate Arun and Beulah Etwin's 25th wedding anniversary. Indeed, God's continued blessing upon each and every one of you as you continue to grow in love and grace together. There's much for us to continue to be in prayer for, friends. We continue to pray for those who are suffering under the crisis in Afghanistan and in Haiti, all those who are continuing to figure out how they're navigating their life post-Hurricane Ida and all of the other torrential and flood waters that have come. We lift up all of our health care workers amidst spiking Delta variant numbers. And we lift up Matthew and Nicholas Walters, or Walters, I should say, along with William Morrison. We're thankful for God's continued healing for Ken Berry and Pat Shuffler, Patty Morrison, Paul King, Braden Smith, and Nina Smith. And we ask God's continued and swift healing for Ann St. John, Andrea Schrader, Reverend Sharon Scott, Karma Houston, Opal Sherman, John Welsh, Otto Mildred, and Edna Tyson, Harry Ellis, Reverend Nancy Frank, Elizabeth Bartram, Shelley Chapel, Sue Jackson, Terry Shuffler, Brian Lim, and Alexander Frazier. Just as a side note, friends, uh, Anne is continuing to make progress and doing well. Uh, Pat uh, Fleming and I are trying to do a yeoman's work of filling in. So if you have anything that you need to communicate to Anne, communicate it to us so that she might continue to move forward in her healing process. Amen? Amen. Amen. There we are. Uh, we lift up those who are continuing to suffer as a result of COVID-19 and related COVID-19 illnesses and variants. In particular, we lift up uh, the Reverend Tom Waller and his entire family that are suffering with COVID at this time. We lift up those who are experiencing and struggling with cancer in various forms, including Silas Trupiano, Aiden McLaren, Danielle Maj, Jerry Baum, Sam Johnston, Bill and Marge Johnston, Dottie Bradley, Thomas Lee, Raina Edwards, and her grandfather. We lift up those families that continue to go through seasons of sorrow at the loss of loved ones. In particular, we want to lift up Ruth Yule, who just learned recently that her nephew, Tim Baker, passed away in Wyoming. We also lift up the family of Nadine Moses, who has recovered uh, her body and now has an opportunity for closure, along with the family of the Reverend Tom Tarpley, the family of Leon Jefferson, George Jante Crane, the families of Bobby Drake, Loretha McKinley, the families of Pastor Noth and Shay, the family of the Reverend Dr. Barbara Lewis Lakin, Robert Fry, and Jeremy Cook, and all those who grieve as a result of tragic means, especially those who are victims of mass shootings. I offer you now, friends, a moment of silent prayer for those names and situations that were lifted, along with those that are on your hearts and minds as well. A moment of silent prayer. God of grace, who offers us a peace that surpasses all understanding. We yield ourselves to your will and to your way as we come before you now, bringing to you our burdens, bringing to you our struggles, bringing to you those obstacles that challenge us from seeing and hearing you in our lives. For though distractions and detours that often confuse and conflute our ways, offer us, Lord, that stillness that we need to commune with you yet again that we might hear your still yet quiet voice offering us words of encouragement, instruction, and peace. Remind us that indeed we should not be troubled or anxious for we believe in you and you are with us. As now, Lord, we lift up those who are in great celebrations for birthdays and anniversaries, continue to bless them with year after year of grace and glory. We lift up those who struggle with various issues and ask that you would allow them moments of peace and clarity for every decision that needs to be made, for every hardship that needs to be overcome. Lord, continue to stretch out your healing presence on those who are in various stages of the recovery and recuperation process, that they might heed the advice of those who are in care for them, for those physical therapists that are moving and challenging them to do what they know they can do, that their body doesn't feel like it's able to do at this time. 
for those who continue to offer compassion and grace in hospitals and in nursing facilities for those that we care for. Allow them to also experience mercy and compassion for their families. Lord, we ask your blessing upon all those who grieve the loss of loved ones. For you know what it feels like to lose one who is near and dear to you, so you know our struggles and our pains. Allow us, the community of faith, to be your hands and feet of compassion and comfort, that they know that they are not alone. Come now, Holy Spirit. Speak, for your servants are listening, and will heed your word of instruction. As now we join our voices in the prayer, the model prayer that Jesus offers to us to help guide our time of conversation and commune with you. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we prepare to come to the conclusion of this time of worship by singing one of the wonderful hymns of our church, Blessed Assurance, number 369 in the hymnal. Blessed Assurance, number 369 in the hymnal. As we lift our voices in confidence that indeed God grants us that blessed assurance, no matter what the obstacle might be. Blessed Assurance, number 369 in the hymnal. So friends, as we prepare to depart from this place, but never from the presence of God, I invite you to go forth and now be a blessing to others, for indeed you are a blessing from God, that you might make space for others to connect with the God who loves us all and makes room for us all under God's roof. Now go in peace, and may the peace of God go with you. Amen. Amen.